around 65, 66, mm -hmm. and uh, it wasn't the first year. And I was coming down Linden Street and I heard the, this group talk you know, behind me. There was a group coming and I looked around and here it was about, I think there were about 25, maybe 30 people there. Mm -hmm. And they had the sign, Be Nazareth to Bethlehem Peace Walk. And I thought, this is fantastic right here in River City. I did not know about this at all. And I was just delighted to see it, that there was not just a few people, not just a few, but a group, you know, a significant group of people able to pull this thing together. And so I just joined in. I became involved with a peace group that was already in place in a small way in the Lehigh Valley. And I think it was called the Lehigh Valley Peace Council. Okay. I'm not positive about that, but I ran into the group one year mm -hmm. when I was at the Allentown Fair. It might have been 1963, mm -hmm. something like that, mm -hmm. and signed my name, you know, up to be contacted. Uh, and there were minor things that we got involved in at that time. Lapoco really uh, formed, I think it, it, the base were people that were involved with that Lehigh Valley Peace Council. Mm -hmm. But it formed in response to the war in Vietnam mm -hmm. and the feeling in, among uh, people who were opposed to what was going on that we needed to have um, something a little more uh, intense, a little stronger, mm -hmm. uh, a little more outspoken to deal with, with that situation. It was exciting in mm -hmm. the beginning. Um, those of us, first of all, to find other people who were interested yeah. and to come up with this uh, Lehigh Pocono Committee of Concern, which morphed into the, the Lapoco mm -hmm. Peace Center. Um, there was, um, those of us who were involved really, really were ready to pour energy into it. And so we came together and met, you know, over time, mm -hmm. uh, eventually ending up, I guess, at Kirkridge, yeah. where uh, Lapoco was actually formed. And, you know, the name is the Lehigh, the full name really was the Lehigh Pocono Committee of Concern about Vietnam. Okay. And that was the original name, and I don't recall who, but somebody said, why don't we, you know, just use letters, and how about Lapoco? And Peter Cohen, uh, who lived in Snydersville at that time. Mm -hmm. He kind of, um, you know, agreed to do many, many different things. Okay. I do remember that um, John Oliver Nelson, who was the director mm -hmm. at Kirkridge, and his wife Jane, both of whom are, you know, uh, deceased, I be as my, my recollection says that they called us all together. He had a list of an old peace organization that had uh, just dried up, and but he brought those people together. And, and, and that's the first time I met the Rabbitses. Mm -hmm. uh, that was right before Christmas of 1965, and uh, there was a meeting. Oh, I don't know, 20 between 20 and 30 people, and uh, everybody was very concerned about the war in Vietnam and what we could possibly do about it. And, so we found the Lehigh Pocono Committee of Concern. I was there and I found my name on a, a group letter that we wrote. Five of us wrote it, but uh, uh, the whole group endorsed the idea and the points we wanted to make in the letter. Mm -hmm. So we all got to sign it and it was to the, uh, uh, I think four newspapers printed it. And I know early on we decided that it would be really good to have a newsletter. I had a mimeograph machine at my house. Yeah, yeah we had a, a room that we had the mimeograph machine in and we used to call it our revolution room. We didn't have all the technology that we have and it was a really messy old machine that I don't recall where we got it, but we had it up in a room that we didn't really use for much else and we said, and we called it the revolution room because we said all you really needed back then was a, a mimeograph machine and you could uh, get a revolution going. <laughs> The, the other thing that Women's International League did do was um, vigil every Saturday at the circle down in the circle. And we decided that we would be there every day, every Saturday, mm -hmm. for an hour until the war ended. 
and um, and we were true to our word. I think it was in December of 1969 that I actually submitted my resignation to the draft board. Mm -hmm. And over the next year or two, um, I was called up for induction in Wilkes-Barre, and that was cause for another demonstration, um, another um, public stance. The other thing which I think needs to be attended to is that when Lepoku did get organized, um, before it was mm, sort of congealed, um, hiring of Anna Hunt mm -hmm. had, a, had a big uh, influence and, and direction and so on. I remember going on delegations to Washington. Uh, Anna Hunt was involved at that time as the coordinator. Mm -hmm. and. You, know, you would do demonstrations as the Vietnam War tailed away the work became a little bit less incisive I think generally uh, it became more military budget mm -hmm. uh, it wasn't so the, the immediacy of, of the Vietnam mm -hmm. War wasn't hitting us in the face every day. I remember in 72 being very involved, 1972, being very involved in a um, series of demonstrations and activities in Harrisburg around the Harrisburg Seven Trials. These were um, the Berrigan brothers and others that were put on trial charge with some kind of, um, kind of pretty foolish charges uh, regarding Henry Kissinger and, and the war and heating tunnels in Washington, D.C. In any case, that was close by in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, so there was a lot of effort from here to get people to participate. They had a whole series of teach-ins, and there was a big um, march and actions uh, around Good Friday of that year. But of course, the big transition came in 1974 when Anna um, retired, resigned from working for Lepoco, and then I became the staff person. <laughs> So, so that was in 
I really just kept thinking about Lapoco as being part of this larger network of little, small, really organic peace groups that are that are hanging on from from when they were established in the Vietnam era that that are still around. It is really a vibrant part of that network of organizations. And um, and also I like it as opposed to like move on and sort of political action groups that are out there right now. I really am glad that places like Lapoco exist to be to add a little bit more humanness to the issues. It's just it's not a political action group. It's a community action group. And I like that. I mean, it's about political issues, but it, but I really like that it's just small, it's local, it has local impact, and and I just really like that it, it's it's like a, a neighborhood peace center. I, I love it that there is a neighborhood peace center so in Bethlehem. Yeah. <laughs>